Hi guys, today we're going to do something a little bit different than we usually do and we're going to model a um, iOS style switch button to be more precise. Okay, so we're going to create a new package. I'm going to call it um, toggle switch or actually iOS in case we will do something similar in the future. Um, yeah, class, and we're going to call it, um, I know, iOS, iOS app or something. And we'll do the usual. We extend a JavaFX application, we then implement start. launch with arguments then we create a method that creates our content and we're going to use a pane as usual set preferred size to something small 300 Stage set C. We'll see with our create content. And finally, step, show the stage. Alright, so now we. Well, we have this, which is a, an empty window. And now we're going to model um, this kind of switch button or toggle switch. So, private static class toggle switch um, extends parent. And we'll create the stuff we need in the constructor. So it is kind of useful to have it in front of you if you're modeling something. So it's, um, as far as I can see, it's a, an oval shaped, um, possibly a rectangle um, with arc height and arc width set. Um, and within it, it is a circle. So the background can be filled with, um, well, it's green, light green, and um, we can make it customizable, I suppose. Okay, so we'll start with the background first, and that background is going to be um, rectangle. Hundred um, and fifty probably more than twice as long but that should do for now set fill um, color white so we're sort of modeling this part um, the off um, state background set stroke to light gray <coughs> We also need to set arc with possibly 50. Same value for arc height. And then um, and then the circle. Circle is the trigger. Circle, circle with radius would has to match the height. So it's going to be 25 radius 25 gives us diameter 50 and we need to remember to set center to the same value because in JavaFX the circle the circle center is 0 0 which we don't want because we could um, then easily move using uh, translate X and Y 
values, we can easily move the circle as if it was drawn from the top left corner. The trigger also has a um, fill of color white. Trigger set stroke color white gray. Okay, I think that's it. So get children. At all, we first add background, and then the trigger. So the trigger is drawn on top of the background. Yeah, that'll do for now. Then we'll instantiate our toggle switch. Oh yeah, it's a resort word, so I cannot use that toggle. And we're going to add toggle to the root, so it's displayed. Might as well set translate x and y to see how it moves. Set translate y 100. Okay, so we have something similar, a bit smaller though. Um, but you don't want to have a control which is too large. So this is kind of alright, I think. So now we have our um, off state. We could have used some sort of a shadowy um, effect using drop shadow, possibly. Um, as you can see, there is sort of shadow underneath the circle as if it appears to be on the top of this, it kind of gives a fake 3D effect. Now we need to um, be able to switch it on. So we will need a... Well first of all we'll need some billion property to keep track of the state. Switched on. New symbol billion property and by default it's going to be false. So it's going to be in the off state. We should also be able to retrieve that property. Switched on property, which returns that property. Because it's a UI element and it's supposed to be switched on or off by the user, um, I think ideally this should be read-only property so that you cannot set values outside um, only manually using sort of um, so basically by the user. But we'll do it um, for the sake of simplicity, because otherwise you'll need to have uh, read-only. Um, wrapper and then obtain read only property from that wrapper to kind of creates um, extra constraints which we don't want. Alright, so um, switched on add listener zero old state new state so if um, Okay, so we still need to play that animation from going to um, going from left to right, and um, we can actually define our animations here. So the first animation is the transition uh, translate transition because it goes uh, it moves x and y values of the circle for trigger. So it's going to be translate transition. Um, translate animation with duration of um, something small-ish, I don't know, quarter of a second. And we need to set the node, so translate tran um, animation set node the trigger 
because this is the node that is being um, animated. And finally, we set um, two values, so animation set two value. Y, uh, y value stays the same, so it only moves in the x axis. Set to x. So if new state, well, first of all, we'll get the state um, is on new state billion value. So this is the new state to which um, this thing was switched, and is on will return true if the switch is on and false um, if the switch is off. So if it's on, we need to move it from left to right. Is on and left to right means to that position, which is 100 because of the rectangle of the width, minus the diameter of the circle, which is 50. So 100 minus 50. If not on, then we move it back to zero. Translate animation. Play. Oh yeah, we also need to add a mouse listener, mouse event. Um, set on mouse clicked. Switched on set the reverse of switched on get. So if get returns true, then we set to false. If returns false, we set it to true. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so as you can see, it kind of moves um, if you can see it left right um, left right so it works um, we might also set the um, have a background set to black so it's more visible rectangle background so I'm going to add a global background and then toggle it's more visible, I suppose. Okay, so what else? Um, yeah, we need to have another animation because um, the background color doesn't just become um, green from white. It transitions sort of um, from white to green. Fill transition is the thing that will help us in this particular case. Fill animation. We'll choose the sa um, same duration. And import that. Fill animation. Um, set node, or what is it? Set, not set shape. And we're animating the background's color property. So it's not the trigger, it's the background. And since um, these animations are parallel, we might as well have a parallel animation. So it plays it um, simultaneously. Okay, so um, we got that now, so we no longer need to do this. We'll just do animation play, but we do need to set color um, property to fill animation. So fill animation set from value. So if it's on, 
we're moving from the from value is um, white. And it's not on the um, light green. And the other way around here. Because um, when it's on, we're moving from white to light green. When it's off, we're moving from light green to white. So when we switch it on, it um, the background slowly changes from white to green and um, the other way around. All right, and I suppose the last thing is to have a property which is bound to the switched on property of the toggle switch, which could be um, just a text to test it out. Um, just text. Text, text property, um, bind bind to a binding bindings when when toggle switched on property then what we say uh, on otherwise we say off. So it's a nice way of saying um, when the toggle switches on, then set text of um, this object to on, otherwise, so it's else kind of set off. We also need to display text on the screen and possibly set fill color to something. Um, which is not black, it could be white. Toggle and then the text. And we're going to place the text um, translate x 200, translate y 200. Actually, x could be 100. Yeah, let's try that. So it says off. Actually, I'm going to set font to something larger. I to do it. As you can see, it tracks the state of the um, toggle switch, which is done using binding. Um, and you can do other, um, other things like um, add a listener to the switched on property. So when you switch on, you do something, or switch off, you do something else. It is kind of um, useful to do it, to use these things in um, user interfaces or settings. So like um, turn on, you know, Wi-Fi or something. Or if you're, um, if we're talking about games, then it could be, um, I know, some like nightmare mode or um, turn on the music, turn off the music, um, something like that. And, well, at the very least, it looks nice. It simulates the iOS style, which is, I think, iOS 8. It might be different in the ninth version. But in any case, now you have a toggle switch um, in just about 100 lines of code. And um, you can do various things with it. There is a toggle button, which is a native um, JavaFX control, which you can also use, but um, it's not as nice. 
Anyway, um, thanks for listening and thanks for watching.